this is Dorothy Pittman, and I've lived in Hollis since 1970. Moved here with my husband, and I have five children, but only three of them were in the school system here in the Hollis schools. Where did you come from? From Laconia. My husband was uh, involved with a family business, a hosiery business in Laconia. And then uh, that discontinued, and he went to work for an uh, outfit in Nashua. One of those, the companies, I know they were, there were companies in Nashua that made blankets and other kinds of linens. Was that where he moved to, or something else? No, it was the uh, Nashua Corp. So was he, uh, what, would, what did he do for a living? Uh, no, he was more in sales. And uh, in the hosiery mill, he was more in charge of production, that sort of thing. Okay. And yourself? Well, I've been a homemaker. I graduated from UNH in 47 and had uh, thought I would be teaching. But uh, back in those days, I think we were anxious to get a family started <laughs> early. So um, I pretty much stayed home for good many years taking care of my children. Did you meet him at UNH? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We both happened to take a, an art course, not that either one of us was particularly artistic, but uh, we took this art course and I happened to have sat next to him. And when I went the next time to class, he had a sign on the seat, reserved for the artist. Oh, that is sweet. <laughs> So he, 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 he liked you right away. Huh? <laughs> so that's how it all started. And where did you grow up? Up in the Lisbon area, which is south of Littleton. Oh, way up. Yes, mm. <laughs> up in the North Country. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why this area when you moved down here? Was it for the job? Mm, yes. And why did you pick Hollis? You could have picked any of these towns around this area. Well, I guess we didn't want to live in a more city atmosphere, so that's one reason why we chose Hollis, plus we heard that it had a good school system. <clears throat> and at that time, my two daughters were in school. My youngest one was in nursery school at that point. So I guess that had a lot to do with why we came to Hollis. When you came to Hollis and drove around before you bought a house, what did it look like? It was much more rural <laughs> than it is now, a lot more open fields. And, uh, well, the other reason was that when we moved to Hollis, we had a horse. <laughs> so we needed to be out in the, in the country. What was the horse's name? Red, Red Boy. It was a beautiful horse. It belonged to my oldest daughter, who loved riding, and she loved the horse. So, so it made a difference where we were going to live. <laughs> yeah. Did you envision <clears throat> having other animals too? Maybe some chickens or anything? No, no. We had we had house pets, dog, cats, and small animals. Mm -hmm. Where did you move? What was which house? Was it this house that we're in now? Mm -hmm. And what did this street look like back then? Actually, this street has not changed. It's just about the way it was when we moved here, except that when we moved here, the street dead-ended just, just above me, and then a new development was started around the corner, and originally this was going to be a stop street out here, and there wasn't, it wasn't going to continue, but suddenly we found the road was <laughs> built, and it now continues all the way around Hideaway Lane. So you were attracted to the town because of it was rural. You could keep your horse here. How much land do you have? We don't. Ha actually, the houses on this part of the street were built before the two-acre requirement was in. So we, have, we don't have two acres. We have probably an acre and three quarters. Did you keep the horse here or did you board it? We boarded it. What else about the town did you notice after you'd moved in, in terms of its rural nature? Or was it already starting to change by that time? 
Well, I think build, building of homes, many new homes were going up and much larger homes than had been built previously. How did you feel about that? How did I feel? I guess it didn't, I guess I was surprised in a way because it probably would change the picture of Hollis because along with the fact that the new homes had to have two acres, which meant a pretty good investment in land, then these very large homes that were going up would make it probably not affordable to many younger couples who might like to live in Hollis. So not only was it becoming more of a bedroom community, but it was becoming a a rich bedroom community too. I would say that's very true. And was that what, that's not what you were expecting? I was surprised, yes. But of course, this part of the state probably is the part of the state that has been growing the fastest in the last few years. When you first moved to town, did you, and and maybe even you still do, did you go up to Lulls or Brookdale's and use those farms to get your, your groceries, your your milk, your eggs, or anything? Well, somewhat. I tended probably to go to the larger stores that were in Nashua for my, you know, my weekly shopping of, of products. And at the time when you moved in, were there poultry farms still here? Dairy farms? Yes, there still were dairy farms and there were poultry farms, and there are none of those anymore that I know of. Do you have any memories of bringing your kids to those farms to see the animals or, or having to stop on the street so the cows could cross or, or any of those types of memories? Not, not particularly, no. And what kind of a welcome do you think you received when you moved to town? Was this an easy place to live? Well, I think I was so busy getting settled and getting my children in school and so on. I... I think uh, then we became involved in the Congregational Church, and that was very welcoming. So uh, met, you know, many people through that. Okay. And in the schools, was this it was easy to meet people because you had kids in school, too? Well, that's in one way of making friends, because you get to know your children's uh, families. Did you find that most of your friends were people in a similar situation as you? They had moved to town more in the 70s, for instance, as opposed to people who had grown up here and had lived here for generations? And the other thing was back then, practically everybody who lived on this street had children. And you would see them out playing in the yards after school or during the day. And today, even though there are children in this neighborhood, you very seldom see them out, which is a big change. Hmm. So was this a good street to raise kids on? Yes. They, did the kids congregate outside, get together and play after oh, school? Oh, they would go from one family's house to the other and, you know, run back and forth, ride their bikes up and down the street. And, uh, I mean, we weren't concerned that something was going to happen to them because they were out playing. Tell me about your kids. You have... Five. I have five. Okay. And who are they and where are they now? Well, my oldest son has retired. He he worked for a number of years for the UCC and then he uh, uh, worked for New Hampshire Camp Camping Association and he's now retired and he lives in Holderness. And my oldest daughter lives in Holderness and her husband is retired. He was a a high school teacher at the Plymouth High School. And then I have another daughter who lives in Goffstown, and uh, she works for a title company in Portsmouth and drives back and forth. And then my next daughter lives in Colorado, and I have one granddaughter out there. She went out because she was a biker and a hiker and and really enjoyed the lifestyle of Colorado. And then my youngest son, Rod, lives in Franklin, and uh, he and I enjoyed a number of years working together 
as uh, he had a show called More Than Meets the Eye Magic Theater, and we both were clowns and uh, did many shows throughout the state. Wow. <laughs> How'd you get involved in that? Well, he was only 12 when he started and obviously needed transportation. <laughs> <laughs> So his mother transported him, and then he decided he needed help on the stage with his show. And since I was there, I might as well help him, he said. <laughs> but I had to be a clown in order to help him. Whoa, yeah. So I became Daffodil the Clown. Oh, that's so funny. So <laughs> what did you do as part of this act? Well, more or less hand him things or... <laughs> or jump around or just 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 to keep the show going and he really did r really well with the show he did this for a good many years wow and when did you stop doing this with him? when he graduated from high school <laughs> then he continued on by himself and then uh, after he was married he really didn't have the job that he could uh, take a lot of time off to do shows <clears throat> maybe during the daytime, which he would had been able to do before. But we had many interesting experiences. I'm sure. Well, how far did you travel? Well, actually, pretty much all over New Hampshire and, uh, and into Massachusetts. And who would hire him? Uh, oftentimes, libraries would hire him for their special events. Or families would have him come to do a family birthday party. You know. It's very enterprising. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> it was fun. So do you see your kids pretty often then? Oh, no. yes, yes. Except for my daughter in Colorado. I don't get to see her too often. And, and the horse? How long did the horse last? Until my oldest daughter, well, after we moved here, she was just starting college. So actually... We gave the horse away at that point only because she wanted to be able to ride if she came home. So I made an arrangement with someone in town who took the horse, and then if and when she came home and wanted to ride, she would be able to. So what is it about a small town like Hollis that you appreciate? I think the friendliness and I think getting to know people perhaps a little more than you would in a large city. And uh, I think the interest that people have in their town and, and what goes on in their town too. Uh, for a number of years, uh, my husband was quite involved in a ski group. We had a cross-country ski club here. I planned uh, outings, maybe weekends, and which was a lot of fun. And then all of a sudden, we just didn't seem to get that amount of snow anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so um, it, we stopped doing that. I, I guess that still, there's a lot of snowmobilers, for instance, who mm. still get together and do that type and of thing. And good hiking trails so, all through Hollis. Excellent ones, yeah. Do you use Beaverbrook? Pardon? Do you use Beaverbrook, the, the hiking trails at Beaverbrook? Yes, well, <clears throat> we used to use their trails particularly for cross-country skiing. Sue had mentioned that you had been involved, she mentioned the church, but mm -hmm. you were also involved in some of the committees in town. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I've been active in a number of groups. I've been active in the Extension Club, um, the Women's Club, and then various committees from from the church. Mm -hmm. Doing doing what? Is there anything in particular that you are proud of having accomplished? I guess just trying to be active and do do my my part as much as I can. I'm also active at the state level for the UCC church. So what does that involve? Well, there's a state women's fellowship board that's part of the UCC, and I've been a member of that board for quite a few years. So do you go to Concord? And... Well, the, the office for that is in Pembroke. And what kind of work do you do? I'm actually treasurer of that particular group. <laughs> Pay the bills and send thank you notes and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
the town now is pretty large in size compared <clears throat> to probably when you moved in maybe around a thousand maybe 1500 2000 people I would think probably and now it's around six seven thousand people what changes have you seen over the years besides the population actually the town itself hasn't changed that much I mean they have stayed away from big box stores and that sort of thing and uh, it's probably, I don't know just how to say this, it, it, it really has changed somewhat in as much as I think it's a different level of people who can come to Hollis now to be able to afford to live here. Can, can we place a value on that? Is it good? Is it bad? Well, I think it's maybe too bad for children growing up here, not to have more of a di diversified community mm -hmm. as far as actual uh, exposure to other races and other theologies and so on. So, to me, it's more of a bedroom community than an actual small town. I grew up in a small town, and to me, that had everything. It had its own stores, its churches, its library, and doctors, and so on. Whereas Hollis has become more and more of a bedroom community. Yeah, you can't really get your grocery shopping done. I mean, you could go to Harvest Market, but a lot of a lot of the things you need, you really have to go to Nashua for. You do, and most of the doctors are all in Nashua. The hospitals in Nashua. We have a very nice small library here. Let me ask you a couple of questions about growing up. For instance, as a girl, what did you do for fun when you were little? What did I do for fun? Yeah. Well, I know one of the things I enjoyed doing, my friends and I had Shirley Temple dolls, and we used to make outfits and clothes for them and make up stories of ex exciting things for our dolls to do, <laughs> which I don't think they do today. <laughs> And uh, I can remember roller skating on the sidewalks, you know, biking. Of course, there were no lunches at school. Everyone walked home, had lunch, and walked back to school. And even though it was a small school, I felt that I received a really good education from the school. How many people were in your class? Seventeen. Do you remember anything about World War II? Of course, because we didn't have TV, I don't think we really were exposed as much to it, unless you had a family member who was in the service. I didn't have any brothers or sisters, and my dad was not eligible to be in the service. And uh, I don't think it made that much of an impression on me, unfortunately. You mentioned TV. Do you remember having a radio at home growing up? I think we did, but I don't remember. Oh, yes, I know we did, because I like to listen on Saturdays to the, uh, what was it called? The program that would feature the song of the week. But other than that, I don't, oh yes, there were others, there were uh, stories, I guess, that we would listen to. And what about your first TV? Do you remember your first exposure to TV or getting your first TV? That was in Laconia after I was married and my oldest child was about five and he became <laughs> uh, very involved with watching TV to the point that one day the bulb burned out in the TV and we decided that we would not get a new one for a while. So for a year, we did not have television. Thought maybe he'd learn to read and enjoy books and do other things. Did he? Well, he had to. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't watch too much TV then? No, I don't remember watching a lot. Now? I probably watch it more now. <laughs> well, with the news and 
so on. You tend to watch it more to see what's going on. I think we're much more aware of what's happening in the world today than I did, even when I was first married. Sometimes when you're married, though, and you have little kids, you're so involved with your kids that everything else takes a little bit of a back seat. Right. You keep quite busy. <laughs> yeah. Where were you when John F. Kennedy was assassinated? Do you remember? I was in Laconia, and I remember it had quite an effect on my oldest son. I think at that point he was about 16, 15 or 16. And I think uh, it really it really impacted, I think, the young people because he was, I think, uh, sort of an idol for them. Do you remember exactly where you were when you heard the news or where he was when he heard the news? I guess we were watching TV. And afterwards, do you remember the emotions or the feeling in the country? Well, I think it, it was a very upsetting time for people. What about the Vietnam War? I just have, you know, just had the feeling people were not supportive of it. or And I, I didn't have anyone in my family that was involved in it at all. And that, uh, I'm afraid we just sort of ignored it in many ways. Mm -hmm. It was so far away. I think a lot, of, a lot of people said that. So far away, I didn't pay much attention and to it. And of course, we, didn't, we weren't watching it like we watch everything today. <laughs> the 60s were a little chaotic. Do you remember much about, or did you pay attention to Watergate? The riots that were happening? Protests. Well, I, yes, I'm sure I did. Yes, we were listening and couldn't believe things were going on like that. What about the music of the times? <laughs> the Beatles? The Beatles, Woodstock? <laughs> and John Denver. Really good music back then. <laughs> yeah. Were you a fan? Oh, yes, I enjoyed it. Do you remember the first album you ever bought? No, I don't remember which one I bought. I'm sure we did. <laughs> you like the Beatles, though? Oh, yes, I like the Beatles. I like John Denver, particularly. And what did you think of Woodstock? Well, I probably thought it was exciting. <laughs> 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 but I didn't go, of course. Uh. And my, my children weren't involved at that either. Do you still listen to music today? Do you enjoy music? Mm -hmm. Public television oftentimes brings back some of the older people, which is fun to listen to. We, we watch television. We, we've cut the cable, so all we have is broadcast now, and we can watch old copies of uh, old episodes of the Dick Cavett Show, for instance. Oh, yes. So interesting to watch these old interviews. I watch, uh, oftentimes I turn to the uh, Turner classic movies, and I really enjoy some of those old movies. It seems like they had better stories and the acting was really much better than it is today. Today it seems like so much more emphasis is on the background, music, noise, and, and you know, things to make it exciting. But I really like the stories that they used to portray on the movies. Yeah, now it's like so much emphasis on the special effects, mm. the CGI, and what, what you can do with the computerized graphics. Right. What about holidays? How did you celebrate holidays when you were, when you were young? Well, actually, as I said, I was an only child, and uh, my parents married 11 years before I was born, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> and they weren't great for celebrating. So what happened at Christmas then? Well, we had a Christmas tree, but I mean, we didn't make a big deal of it like we do today. Now everyone gets 25 presents and blah, 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 and you, that didn't happen. No, no. I I remember that, the, especially when my children were little, was the Sears and Roebuck Christmas catalog, and we would order things from it, but it wasn't this huge push to buy, 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 which today I think we're really kind of spoiling our holidays by making it so commercial. So many things 
seem to be so much simpler. In fact, I have a grandson that's getting married in the fall, and just listening to all the planning and so on that has to go into a marriage today and the cost, they say, told, oh, well, $10,000 is probably the minimum, you know, and, uh, and fewer and fewer marriages are taking place in churches anymore. And destination weddings, which are a big expense for, for people who may want to go to the wedding, too. Right, so people get priced out of even attending. Sometimes my mom will sit and she and I will talk about, uh, and I'll ask her questions about how things were simpler then, and she'll tell me, yeah, when we wanted dessert, we would go down into the cellar and get an apple. And yeah. my mother said that was your dessert. Do you remember anything like that? No, my mother did a lot of cooking. I think my father maybe liked pies. <laughs> so, uh, so she used to do a lot of baking. You know, I have a I had a husband who enjoyed dessert. <laughs> meal wasn't a meal unless we had a dessert. So, I guess we get today we got a little e- lazy because we can go and buy a package, and all we have to do is add an egg or a little milk to it. So I don't, you know, I wonder if uh, young women today are learning to bake the way we did. And, and grocery stores more and more have these to-go sections where you can just go in and salad bar and chicken wings. and Right. You don't really have to learn how to cook. What do you think of Hollis today? Do you still enjoy living here? Oh, yes. I, I enjoy living here. I You know, I have a circle of friends that I enjoy and activities that I enjoy doing. So I I like living here. The only thing, I think it, it's a town that is difficult for older people if they no longer drive. If I were to lose my license, I probably would move because uh, being alone, you have to depend on other people to do anything. I mean, I don't live close enough to the post office or to the church or to the store to actually to be able to walk to all of those places. So I would have to depend on someone to pick me up or, you know, and my doctor's appointments are all in Nashua. Yeah, you could walk and get eggs. You're pretty <laughs> close, <laughs> close to that place. But I know what you mean. It's your, your, you'd be pretty isolated. I think they do have a, a bus system now that if you call in advance if you have an appointment someplace but that's not the same as jumping on a bus and going where you want to go and staying as long as you want to stay and <clears throat> then come home and so that you know as I said makes it a little more difficult for elderly people I think to stay in town. Well you look like you're in great health though. I I I guess I inherited some good genes. My dad lived to almost 90, and my mother was 101. Wow. (laughs) So I think I inherited some good genes. We had talked before about the two-acre zoning. That has been really helpful, don't you think, in keeping the Oh, I think particularly in a town where you have no city storage or city water. I mean, you have to have extra land. And it's helped, I guess, the town seems very interested in preserving the vistas. Mm. There's been a lot of money that's gone into setting aside land. Is that something that you've gotten behind and support? Well, I think mainly it's because you, you can't have the population growing too fast and having to depend on our own water supply so that you need to have a, you know, a sizable piece of land in order for everyone to, to have their own septic and water system. Do you go to the town meetings? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're always good. Always fun to listen to them. <laughs> good spectacle. I guess they're coming up next week. We'll have yes, the, yeah. we'll the When is it? Saturday, I think? Not this coming Saturday. The Saturday after? Is that when the town meeting is? And then the co-op. The co-op meeting is always good good fun. I probably won't go to all of them, but I'll go to some of them. 
Did you ever feel the urge to get more involved politically in the town, to run for a select board or a zoning board or planning board or anything? Not really, no, no. Did your husband? My husband was involved in quite a few activities, right. So through him? But not politically. I, If I were going to be active at all, I'd probably be active with the Democratic Party, but... Uh, Particularly these days. Yeah. <laughs> if I can ask you about something, and you can tell me, no, I don't want to talk about that, but I'm really curious to ask the women that I've talked to about the whole Me Too movement. And I'm wondering if you have thoughts on that, if ever in your life you felt like you suffered any kind of sexual harassment or anything from men or you knew friends who had. No, but I think to me watching and listening to a lot of this, I think sometimes women want want it both ways. They want to be attractive and they want to be noticed and sometimes perhaps they go overboard and then when the results are not what they wanted, they feel they've been, you know, put down. But I think even young women today, girls, have to know you know, how far to go in encouraging guys. I mean, and also I think alcohol has an awful lot to do, especially when you talk about, you know, rape on college campuses and all of this. But I do think that women deserve to be, to get equal pay for equal work. And really, I I don't think that's fair that I hear of jobs where someone gets half the cost, the price, or the wages that their boss gets, and they're doing the same work. So, And I think women, certainly, we need more women in government, too. There's a lot of women running this year. Yeah, which is good. Looking back on your life, are you happy that you lived it the way you did, or do you sometimes think back, oh, I wish I had gone into teaching and had a classroom or done some other thing in the well, workforce? I was, I was happy with my life the way it was. I don't think I missed too much by not being working full-time. I, after my children were older, I did go to work. I, <clears throat> I used to do some subbing at the schools, and then I, I worked for family planning for several years. And, uh, when you say family planning, do you mean Planned Parenthood or something? No, other? it was family planning in Nashua. I actually did the educational. I was, <laughs> I started out as an outreach worker, drumming up business for family planning. <clears throat> and then I would follow up on women who missed their appointments and so on. And then eventually I did their educations every time they had a meeting or people came in for appointments. We also did an educational session for the women. And so I used to do that. So this was a health care company? I'm not well, they with provided the... contraception. And we had doctors there. And women could come in. Well, it's very much like Planned Parenthood, except it was called family planning. As far as I know, they still have an office in Nashua. Yeah, sure. So how long were you there? Oh, I did that for, I don't know, maybe four or five years. And then I became active at the church, became a Christian ed director, because they didn't have one at the church. Not that I was trained as such, but I sort of did that for a number of years, too. So you, you've had it all. You had the family, and you had a job. Yeah. Are you still active now, volunteering and doing work? Yeah, I do Meals on Wheels every Monday in Nashville, which I enjoy particularly. When you do Meals on Wheels, do you not only deliver the meals, but do you sit down and chat with the people? Well, unfortunately, we don't don't have time to sit and chat. Mm -hmm. Like this week, um, I do it now with uh, Noreen Polis, do it together. We had 32 meals. So... You can't stop and talk to people for very long because you need to get the meals delivered. But but I enjoy doing that. I've been doing that now for quite a few years. 
I think, you know, the meals are pretty good. I mean, I, cause, but it's hard to do quantity cooking, I think, particularly mm. the vegetables are not <laughs> the way I would like them. But, but the main part of the meal is good, and at least it's a hot meal. And when you're by yourself, you don't really, particularly, I'm sure, men particularly, aren't going to go out in the kitchen and cook up a f full meal. I happen to like to eat, so <laughs> <laughs> I do cook myself a good meal every night. Do you have any animals, pets? Not anymore. No, you no, didn't? No, I, I've always had dogs, cats, and... Uh, uh, my children say, oh, Mom, why don't you get a dog? Why don't you get a cat? And I said, well, I think I'll enjoy all of yours. They all have animals. And uh, when I hear what they're paying for vet bills. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. It's more than human bills sometimes. Oh, it is. I mean, uh, in, my, in my time, I mean, we had pets, but I... I mean, they weren't going to the vet. We didn't have to have all these shots and, you know, all the care that they require. Is there anything that you would like to talk about that I haven't covered yet or haven't asked you about? No, I, I guess not. I think I'm sure people my age or the older population is concerned about what's going to happen as far as Social Security and Medicare are concerned. You know, many of us... Uh, do depend on that as we get older. I think particularly younger people today have more options for saving money and putting it aside that we never had. Not that they're doing it. So. <laughs> I think that's one of the tensions you get at town meeting though, because there are you know, younger people in town who come in and they're making good money. And then there are older people in town who are living on social security. And they just don't have the money to pay for the new whatever. Hollis is very fortunate, or those of us who are in Hollis are very fortunate, because Hollis does have the program where, based on your income, you can get a break on your taxes. And I was surprised that there are not that many communities in the state that offer this. Hmm. And it is a big, big help. Right. So do you find that that makes you more inclined to listen to what the bond bond issue is? Mm -hmm. Sure it does, yeah. But, you know, the government through the years has constantly taken money out of that Social Security fund and never paid it back, which to me, when they talk about it's costing the government so much money for Social Security, well, then they should have not taken the money out to begin with. Well, there's also the demographics of the situation, too. As the baby boomers age, there will be a lot more people needing to draw on the Social Security, too. Mm. And I think, you know, it scares the younger people when they keep hearing, well, it'll be gone or you won't have it when you reach that age. So. Right, right. So plan ahead now, if you can. But then If there's... you can, but many people are living beyond their means as it is. So. Right, or they just don't have the skills to have the jobs. Right. Or they are paying college fees for their children. Mm -hmm. Or themselves. Yeah. There plenty of people who are 40 who are still paying their college you know, student loans. I mean, I don't remember <clears throat> when I was in college that people were graduating with huge debts like they are today. I can remember when I went during the summer I'd work, I'd earn a thousand dollars, and that would pay for my tuition. Can right. You imagine? I know, I know. And the other thing is, back in the day, when my, my parents bought their first house, and I think even their second house, you could afford the mortgage on one salary. Hmm. And now you need two people working to afford a mortgage. When, when we came to Hollis in 70, this house, house across the street, were both on the market for 25000 now it's assessed for 250000 It's just hard to see that. And my son gave me a book called The Summer of 27. I just started reading it, and that first chapter is all about airplanes. And back then, 
that was two year. I was two years old. Uh, I mean, planes were just, they weren't even working very well back then. And, and the changes. So, you know, it's uh, <laughs> at Christmas time when my youngest son, they have five children, came. I had had two of them here for a long weekend and was slightly annoyed that they spent so much time with their little gadgets. So I put a sign on my door, leave all electronic devices in the car. Did they like that? <laughs> no, but they did. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't even talk to people who are sitting next to you because you're so involved with this thing that you've got in with your fingers. So it's much different from how you grew up and how I grew up. Right, and I think they're forgetting how to you know, communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think there's really apparently growing concern that there's too much of this right now. Do you find that you can have conversations with your grandkids? Yeah. They're not too distracted. <laughs>